now it is time for us to bring the good news that the everlasting arm of God has delivered to his people. It is time for us to listen to testimonies of the wonderful nature and the mercies of God. We will take the online testimonies and we proceed to the live testifiers. Sister Adaise from United Kingdom participated in the August 2022 convention and the September 2022 Holy Ghost services and received the prophecies spoken through Daddy Geo that one, God will give someone a good problem and two, someone who is jobless will soon have a problem deciding which job to choose. God fulfilled these words in her life. Between February 2023 to April 2023, she had received three job offers. Praise the Lord. Mr. and Mrs. Oluwa Damilare from Nigeria. Mr. and Mrs. Oluwa Damilare from Nigeria. In 2022, whilst pregnant, she was told that there was too much water in the baby and the child would have to be delivered at a teaching hospital in Lagos. They connected to the April 2022 Holy Ghost service and cried to God for divine intervention. God answered and the baby was delivered safely and without any complications. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The next testimony is from Mrs. Esther Ojo from Nigeria. Her daughter was diagnosed with lumps in the breast at just 14 years. She was scheduled for an urgent surgery as she was in pain. She laid the handkerchief prayed on by our Father in the Lord during the December 2022 Holy Ghost Congress on her and prayed to the glory of God. Two weeks after, the pain stopped. Another scan was carried out and nothing was found in her. Praise the Lord. The next testimony is from brother, is by brother Matthew Ojuolakwe from the United Kingdom. His niece in Nigeria fell ill and was placed in the intensive care unit unconscious. In eight, on the eighth day after numerous tests, her case became critical with no hope in sight despite all the efforts of the doctors. Her organs also began to shut down. But after the April 2023 Holy Ghost service, the pastor in charge of their parish prayed for her using the oil and the handkerchief prayed on by our daddy in the Lord. Miraculously, she woke up and had a full recovery. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The next one is from is by Sister Elizabeth from the United Kingdom. In February 2023, she was taken to the emergency unit due to excruciating pains from kidney stones which she had been diagnosed of six years earlier. Several scans and tests had been done on her with one showing that there was a big stone in her. She connected to the February 2023 Holy Ghost. She connected to the February 2023 Holy Communion service where Pastor E. A. Adeboye spoke and prayed on healing. She keyed into it and to the glory of God after screening the same doctor who said she had kidney stones stated that she no longer had stones in her. Praise the Lord. The next testifier is Sister Temitokwe Darius from the United Arab Emirates. In the year 2022, whilst pregnant, she had a lot of health complications, including having the baby grow along a 10-centimeter fibroid. 
She attended the April 2022 Holy Ghost service where Daddy Gio prayed and made a statement that anything that needs to be repaired or replaced in our bodies, God should do it. She keyed into that prayer and to the glory of God, she carried her baby to term and delivered a baby boy without any complications. Somebody shout hallelujah. The next testimony is by Sister Kende Kalejaye from USA. She had been battling high blood pressure for years and was on several medications. But our, our heart grew worse. She participated in the January 2023 Holy Ghost service and asked God for a brand new heart. To the glory of God, he healed her of 12 years of high blood pressure. Praise the Lord. Now we take the live testifiers. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I name her Deji and Sister Disholadada from Region 26, Lagos Pro 55, Soon 4, Great Sanctuary, Ikorodu. I want to appreciate the name of Almighty God for terminating the yoke of barrenness of six years in my family. 2021, we have the privilege to see our daddy in the law, Daddy Adeboye, through our pastor, Pastor Kedere, during our church dedication in Kurudu. Daddy lay hands on I and my husband for prayers. 2022, January, I had a dream and I saw our daddy in the law in the dream. Daddy put anointing, anointing oil on my hand and he prayed for me. But I've got have it February 2022. I got pregnant. And when I was uh, my pregnant was seven months old, I saw our daddy in the Lord and our mom in the Lord. They prayed for me like two to three times in my dream. As God we have it, exactly a year, 2022, October, I give birth to these wonderful children, Oluashe Ifumita and Oluashe Milogo, a boy and a girl. Who did this? Jesus, oh my God. Eminare Oluwa bo wa dupe ore atodun modun bo wa dupe ore ya bo Eminare Oluwa Oluwa mo dupe lowo yi mi ni grace ayola gbo gba la Sugba ni ba ti mo de redeem source. Oluwa wo mi so patapata nu gbogbo ai so patapata iba apadu iba typhoid iko gegere gbogbo ai so patapata pata ti se yan le aye yi ni won fi daughter mi lo la sugba mo dupa lowo olorun baba mi ade mi jare ade boye owo mi so patapata pata 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 ti o se ku kokan bayi but to our dollar say, Nick Batimo di Reca, Kiloka, that Bemisosinu, Sangisa, Bambo Dupala, or Lord, was it a while you are in Bella Coco? Be better Bemi de Bobby, my beggar, my yard, a gammy woe. Ah, money, oh, what, oh, what did the Lama not say? I want my mill and my son, one bar up your people, be one, I want my fish, yes, Emmy. If that to be your semi, you are banning pure pure, she said, Let's say, Mao, one la ma, she said, Pesce, you know, one la ma, a wire that go bunk, a map, she said, Yo, one la wool, one pure pure, a morara, ah, a mammy basso, cool, and a basso, and my gasso, one a camel, lossile, calorie, wa, il a give me long wa, I won't be she said, Pesce, la baton bera, one a bobby, la bawa, she but why they let you be me go get on? Lord, mommy, buddy. 
Loma mi ba dan lo ba ni. Ai kini ti ma si si esen ko. Anu eti ti ba ba fun wa. Me ka to do anu eti yo. Ka ma je ki awon eyan buruko fowo ba anu eti yo. Mo ba gba anu eti yan mo ba gbe pa mo. Anu eti yen lo sa si se ya nunu nu ese yi. Ti o tu je wo gba ilaji million mo ni gbobi. Ba se de ba se de le. Omo mi ba di lo gbe anu eti wa. Lo ba fi si atan papo ni ba pe baba wa de jare ade boye ni ba pe to 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 lori ese yi se ri bo se pe baba wa de boye be ni a olodumare o to bi lo ba o be le to ego to to lagara ra 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 bi gba ti ara ba san o si de tan mi gban ah mo ni mo ri jesu o mo ri jesu o gbogbo erin ara abuja kapa mo ri jesu mi mo se pariwo lawon aro asale ba sare bu asoke pe mo mi mo mi kire re mo ni mo ri jesu ni mo ri jesu ni let somebody shout hallelujah mama's name is grace ayola her testimony goes thus she said she said before she joined asucg the devil afflicted her with all manners of sickness malaria Typhoid, anything you can name it. But as she got to the New Christian Church of God, God delivered her. And again, the second testimony, she said one day, bike, bicycle, I mean, Okada, hit her and broke her leg. And they carried her to the hospital. At the hospital, they told them they had to pay half a million naira. And they came back, how do we get this? They couldn't get it. But all along the line, the son brought the oil, anointed oil from her father and the Lord, and they began to apply it in that leg. He said one day, suddenly as he was applying it and mentioned the name of Papa Deboye and he was praying, suddenly the, uh, the bone started coming to the right place. And that is how God has totally healed her. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My name is Adikines Oyebinkpi Adebi. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. And secondly, I want to thank God for delivering me and two of my staffs from kidnappers then. I am from Region 14, Oyo Province 3, Success Zone. January 30, I set out with some of my staff to Okeogun. A farm where I was working. I'm an architect by profession. So around 3 p.m. when we were through for the day's work, we now set out to start coming to Ibadan. Immediately we drove out of the sites around about 10 minutes on the road. We just had a kick on two of our tires. And I said, what happened? Before we know what happened, about four gunmen rush into the front of our vehicle. I told my pastor, I said, please reverse. Immediately reverse. Another four at the back. And I quickly wind up the glass. That was when I had a kick. They broke the glass with the gun. So they started shooting the car. They screamed every part of the car. So we just had to surrender. I came out and was saying, please don't kill us. We are bricklayers. Before we know it, they rushed us, they ransacked us, took everything we had and said we should fight into the bush. So we started the journey from Monday 38th till February 3rd. We were going every day. In the day we rest, in the night we will be walking. And so they now said they will collect 100 million. That was during the cash policy. I said we cannot afford it. We cannot afford it. I said, it is God that can pay our ransom. Because the blood of Jesus, they said, shut up. Jesus cannot. I said, my God, we do it. When it was Friday, by 2 p.m., they said, if they didn't bring money, they will kill us. And I started shouting, God of Adeboe, do wonders. The most important thing was everybody that had raised an altar. Everybody, the choir department, the church, my PC, PICP, called the GO, 
everybody stood in prayers, in donations. I thank God because around 6 p.m. on Friday, they called us, Mama, want to go where me a day? And so we started thanking God. We, we trekked about two hours to where the people that brought the money. And so we were released. I thank God because we were not killed. It was when I got back home that I discovered that it was a big gunshot. And the fire started press, spreading. So on Holy Ghost of April, I took the anointing by the, uh, by the TV and I put the anointing right round. I said, you must not spread past this place. I used the anointing as Baba was praying. And since then, it did not press, it did not pass that place. I want to thank God because we did not die. They said they will kill somebody. That it is their duty to kill. I said you cannot kill us because we are children of God. They end up killing a farmer. They took that farmer's life. God used him as a ransom for us. But we were delivered. I thank God for everybody that God used for us. To this and many more I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Peter Ojuolabi. I'm from uh, God's Fitness Mega Zona Equator, Ogun Province, 18, Region 12, where I'm still guarding the regime, so I'm just trying to follow protocol. So on, on, the, on the 3rd of April, my daughter complained of a little sickness, and we started the whole process. From one hospital that night around 11 p.m. to another one, we are, they keep refining us that they cannot handle her. So from one place to the other, and around 3 a.m., we, we got to Oshut at Shagamu. And she was rushed to emergency ward. From emergency ward, she was moved to ICU center. And by then, she was very unconscious. In fact, I thought she was sleeping. Then I was interviewed. They said, your guest is unconscious. I carried her myself. I was surprised. They said, she, she cannot talk. She cannot drink. She can I, 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 was, I was crying. On the third day, and the doctor at the ICU center called me, said, your girl is now, this case is now getting serious. That majorly in case by three days, the unconscious person should have recovered. Yours is becoming the fourth day. I, I, I kept crying because I don't know what to do. So I have to call my pastor. I said, sir, please, I beg you, help me run to Pastor Adeboye. He should pray on, an, uh, on, on the mantle for you and bring it to my daughter. And on my part two, I sent a mail. So that the geos email, and I got a reply that your daughter Adishewa will be healed, and you will come here for testimony. So on Saturday, a day before Easter Sunday, my pastor came with the, with the mantle, and I took her to the ICU. I took him to the ICU center where my girl was lying. We both prayed together. I tied the mantle on her head. I put the anointing on her forehead, and we went. All those days, I was sleeping. There, I was sleeping in the car. For all those periods, I was in the car, sleeping, because I cannot stay with her. On the seventh day, which happened to be a Sunday, normally I would walk in the morning to check on her, and she called me daddy. I, 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 complete, I was complete on my knee. I was crying. I was praying. I was thanking God for that miracle. And surprisingly, that day she asked for what? She asked for chicken and fried rice. This girl has been unconscious for seven days. But God brought her back to life. And as we are coming in today, I told her, you are coming in today to have your permanent healing. And I know as she sits there, 22 CS, she is hip. She will go back home with her full strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, I appreciate Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. My name is Mrs. Mowonola Ayeyu. I had an attack 15 years ago. I couldn't walk. The doctor said I couldn't walk again. But I tell God that this report is not mine. I believe in God. And I told my pastor I had to see Daddy Adeboye. When Daddy came to Let's Go Out Fishing last year, December, I was there. And Daddy touched me. He prayed for me. And I thank God because I was healed. I can walk. Before I couldn't walk two minutes, I would be tired, I would be weeping, I would be crying. But today, I can walk. I'm happy. People are testifying to the glory of God in my life. Praise the Lord!
Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Sunday Onjeu, the Director of Entrepreneurship, Redeemer College of Technology and Management in Redemption Camp here. And by the grace of God, I'm an area pastor in FCT2, Kubwa, Abuja. On the 25th of March, I traveled to Abuja because my family and my area is there where I'm serving presently to, by the grace of God. But on getting close to Kaba in Kogi State, Fulani Hesmen jumped to the road and three of us were kidnapped from the vehicle and taken into the forest. On the third day, while with the kidnappers in the bush, they discovered that I am a pastor in RCCG. And their leader said, because you are a pastor, you must surely die. I said, my life is not in your hand. He said, okay, we shall see. We will communicate to our leaders in Kanu and in Abuja. But I can assure you, because you are a pastor, you will be killed. That day, I fainted because of the torture. We walked almost three hours into the forest before they tie our hands and our legs. No food, no water. I asked for my phone. I called my wife. I said, to the glory of God, I am ending the race here. Just be strong, continue in the race, and train the children. God will help you. But on the fourth day, The rector of, my, of the Polytechnic here, Rector, Redeemer College of Technology and Management, Dr. Pastor Mrs. Stella Mofunanya, she was able to call and, and her call came through. And she said she wanted to speak with me. They gave me the phone. And she can sense from my voice that I'm weak. And I told her, I said, Mommy, I am dying. She said, you cannot die. That our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Iyadeboye, Adeboye, Mommy Mommy Adeboye, the chairman of the governing council, Pastor Jeff Odeshola, and all other men of God in the camp, that they are praying for you. You will not die, you will come back. I said, amen. That same day, my zona pastor, Pastor Emmanuel Daramola, in the FCT2 Kubwa, Call again and said, the church in Kubwa, beginning from the Assistant General of Asia, Pastor Dayemi, the regional pastor, and my provincial pastor, Pastor Gabriel, that they have turned my house to church. Prayer is going on day and night in both FCT 2 and FCT 16. That strengthens me. To sustain myself, I started eating leaves. Leaves of gova, leaves of cashew. And any edible leaf that I can identify by the grace of God that study agri. And to get water to drink, they move us around the bush, just like the other sister has said. And whenever I come close to the body of water, whether the water is dirty or not, even the one that cattle were taking, I would deliberately fall into it so that I can drink some water. I spent 12 days there. Several cuts, you can see my hand here, this is a cutlass. And that cutlass was meant for my neck. But I raised my hand to, and it, it cut my elbow. But on the fifth day, one of their leaders came. He said, your God is very, very strong. Your people are praying for you. And the prayer is working. We decided we will kill you, but because your people are praying, we will not kill you again. Praise the Lord. On the twelfth day, I was released. Eleven, twelve midnight. I had to walk 
three hours from the forest to the road where I can find the Okada that is way, that Okada to take me to Kaba town. I am here to thank God and to thank the church and to thank our daddy in the Lord, Pastor Yadeboye, and to thank my regional pastor and all my provincial pastor that God used, everyone that God used for prayer, that the Lord relates me. And I'm happy to join you again. Praise the Lord. I want us all to rise on our feet. Let us give praise to that God whose everlasting arms delivers jobs to the unemployed and gives them a confusion as to which one they should choose. I want us to worship that God whose everlasting arms reaches into the jungles to deliver his loved ones from captivity. I want us to worship that God who loves us so much that he makes his healing readily available to all who seek him. I want us to lift our voice and give a shout of praise to the God of our testimonies, whose everlasting arms will deliver your testimony to you even tonight before the end of this service. Let somebody shout hallelujah.